गुड मॉर्निंग माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ कौसर मोमिन नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड सब्जेक्ट साइंस चैप्टर नंबर नाइन एनवायरमेंटल मैनेजमेंट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडीड वेदर एंड क्लाइमेट मेट्रोलॉजी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट what are you observing through this picture so this is a solid waste and it is completely mixed paper plastic bottles glass bottles the scan all this solid waste is mixed with each other through this we cannot use it we cannot use it again which we can see it as recycle if you will mix it then we won't be able to recycle it we should avoid to throw in this way we should know the idea for the recycling of the specific thing as we know through this paper this paper is going to for the recycling and afterwards your books covers the front cover whatever the things are making all those things are made by this paper only through this glass marbles uh, glass bangles all these <coughs> things recycled by this glass bottle so in this way we can use the things which we are throwing in waste which is a part of solid waste so we should have avoid to waste this all these things we should know the idea of recycling observe these two figures a and b in this picture what are you observing over here what can you observe over here figure a is very dirty with solid waste and figure b is picture b is very clean so do you have any idea about this cleaning effect is in our hand only so what can you do for the same many waste materials are generated through various daily activities and that waste is called as solid waste if these waste materials are properly disposed of they can be valuable source of energy currently solid waste a serious worldwide problem as it causes both water and soil pollution solid waste is also a serious problem for point of view economic growth environmental degradation and health it has posed a serious threat to nature and human habitat because of the air water and soil pollution it causes due to this solid waste we have seen in the previous lecture i have shown you many pictures related to the soil soil pollution water pollution air pollution all these pollutions are happening due to solid waste like there is a reason behind this pollution one reason is of solid waste and due to human being every day's activities this solid waste is generated normal example uh the chips packets and all we are having every day we are throwing just easily on the road we are not uh, throwing it in a specific uh, dustbin okay so this is a part of solid waste only so it is it will it is affecting on the pollution all types of pollution air pollution water pollution soil pollution so in this picture you can observe two areas one is with garbage and other one is without garbage which is clean area so through this concept only 
we can understand that uh, we should avoid the throwing of the object on a road whatever the solid waste we should have to put it in a properly dustbin here is extra knowledge uh, about garbage production for year sorry for day solid waste generated in the main metro cities of the state is approximately as follows in mumbai 5000 tons pune 1700 tons nagpur 9 900 tons on 26th july of 2005 a serious flood calamity had arisen in mumbai improper solid waste management was one of the main reason behind that calamity thus we see that accumulation of solid waste can lead to various calamities so here we have seen a definition for a solid waste due to human being activities whatever the waste is generated that is solid waste and uh, different things includes in a solid obviously through the uh everyday activities all these things gets added with the waste all these different things comes in a solid waste only okay here in this table you can observe uh, the classification and their sources of waste okay so very first waste domestic waste waste food paper plastic paper plastic bags vegetable waste fruit skins glass and sheet metal articles etc industrial waste chemicals pigments sludge ash metals etc hazardous waste chemicals generated in various industries radioactive materials explosives infectious materials etc farm garden waste leaves flowers branches of trees crops residues like straw animal urine dung pesticides remain of various chemicals and fertilizers electronic waste non functional tv sets cell phones music system computers and their parts etc biomedical waste bandages dressing gloves needles saline bottles medicines medicine bottle test tubes body parts blood etc from clinics hospitals blood banks and laboratories urban waste waste generated through household industries large chemical and industrial establishments carry bags glass metal pieces and raw straws rubber paper cans from shops vegetable and meat markets construction waste etc radioactive waste radioactive materials like strontium cerium barium heavy water etc generated from atomic energy plants uranium mines atomic research centers nuclear weapons testing sites etc mining waste remains of heavy metals like lead arsenic cadmium etc from mines so all these types are types of waste which are part of solid waste and these are the sources of this waste now next we will go ahead with the biodegradable waste this type of waste is easily degraded by microbes it mainly includes kitchen waste spoiled food fruits vegetable ash soil dung parts of plants etc this waste is mainly of organic type and is also called wet solid waste wet we can say it as wet garbage whatever the spoiled food and all which is present in a house it is carefully decomposed we can get compost and fuel of good 
quality. Such biofuel projects have been started in many cities. It is very useful for us. Biodegradable waste. Next, non-biodegradable waste. This type of waste is not easily degradable because it requires a very long period of time and the use of various techniques. It includes plastic, metal, other similar materials. This type of waste is also called dry solid waste or dry garbage. That is why the government scheme or mohim is there. We should uh, keep uh, separately uh, wet garbage and dry garbage because this wet garbage is going to become easily decompose and uh, and this dry garbage is not easily decomposing that is why we should uh, keep it separately now here i am giving you one homework this one what do you have to do over here you have to make a list of various materials and articles which present in your area and make a chart for the same example like a uh, plastic bottle is a material is it degradable obviously no non degradable yes it will recycle yes reuse yes is it toxic obviously yes so in this way you have to make a list of the objects any object you can use likewise paper glass bottle can in this picture you can observe that uh, how harmful effect comes through this solid waste so few points are there harmful effects of solid waste what type of effects are there obviously three effects we know very easily air pollution water pollution soil pollution so another is a spreading of diseases bad order of waste production of toxic gases degradation of natural beauty and it will affect on our biodiversity also so these are the harmful effects of solid waste you have you also have to make this chart harmful effects of solid waste so how it is necessity of solid waste management how much it is so that discussion we will do over here so topic is necessity of solid waste management for preventing environmental pollution and to keep the surrounding clean for energy as well as fertilizer production and through that to generate work and employment opportunities to reduce the strain on natural resources through treatment of solid waste to improve the health and quality of life and to maintain environmental balance it is need of the hover to implement the solid waste management practices to avoid the possible problems due to solid waste generated from urban and industrial areas to maintain a clean environment for this purpose we should implement measures like increasing the efficiency of production process so that minimum waste will be generated reducing garbage production by recycling and reuse of waste materials so this is the picture this is you can see a chart or you can say a diagram for solid waste management solid waste management scientific and eco friendly waste management very first separation and categorization of waste we should have to separate it carefully and we have to categorize uh, the waste materials in the specific category we should have to compose it 
uh, it should there should be a carefully uh, we should have to keep it safe land fill sites vermi composting industrial solid waste management pyrolysis pyrolysis means energy production by burning of waste at high temperature example biogas bioelectricity and all biomedical waste management which we can say it as incineration so all these factors comes in solid waste management there are seven principles of solid waste management very first is reuse after use materials should be reused for some other proper purposes example i have given you with the starting of this lecture only refuse refusal to use articles made from non degradable articles like plastic and thermocol recycle production of useful articles by recycling solid waste for example paper glass can be recycled rethink rethinking our habits activities and their consequence in connection with the use of various articles of daily use next is reduce restrictions the use of resources to avoid their wastage one thing should be shared by many use and throw type of object should be avoided research conducting research related to reuse of materials that are temporarily out of use regulation and public awareness following the laws and rules related to waste management and motivating others to do the same so these are the seven factors related to principles of solid waste management in the right hand side you can observe in the blue box we should have to follow the r mantra and r mantra is reduce reuse and recycle we should have to avoid throwing plastic wrappers chocolates ice cream biscuits okay avoiding the use of plastic bags using both sides of a paper for writing avoiding the use of tissue paper using rechargeable batteries instead of lead batteries implementing various programs of solid waste management and educating encouraging the family and society in this regard avoiding the use and throw type of articles like pens can cold drinks tetra pack should be strictly avoided we should have to follow all this concept in our daily life also the if you will follow then another your colleagues your friends your family also follow the same and it will helpful for our environment as well as if it is helpful for our environment then definitely it will helpful for our health also if it is helping our environment then environment will be clear if environment is clear then our health is also clear our health is also a strong okay so all the things comes on us only now in this chart you can observe the degradation period of waste so you can observe here waste material banana peelings for the banana peelings how much time is needed for the degradation 3 to 4 weeks cloth bags 1 month rags 5 month woolen socks 1 year wood 10 to 15 years leather shoes 40 to 50 years tin cans 50 to 100 years aluminium cans 200 to 250 years certain plastic bags 10 lakh year thermocol or uh, styrofoam cups infinite duration means they are not ready to degrade okay so you can imagine what are the things which are 
having degradation quickly within a month or within a weeks but the things which are which needs 100 200 years for the degradation so whatever the things are there they are not degrade properly so we should we should avoid them okay uh we should have to follow a specific criteria to for a waste solid waste especially we should have to keep our garbage wet waste as well as dry waste with the two dustbin if you have paper glass plastic metal so keep them separate only okay just follow this concept it will helpful for us all next topic is disaster management all this concept we have studied in your 8th uh, standard also what is disaster various natural disasters like thunderbolts which is the meaning of lightning floods fire man made disasters like accidents bomb explosion chemical accidents in industries stampedes mass gathering riots etc occur around us from time to time they cause large scale damage to life and property so first aid to disaster victims the main objective of first aid prevention of death preventing deterioration of health and starting the process of rehabilitation hence it is important to know about emergency measures or first aid practices to be followed and here the basic principles of first aid which we can say life and rescue situation first is airway if the victim has difficulty breathing the head should be held in backward sloping position or the chin should be raised so that the respiratory passage remains open you can observe a sight there is a way for the same breathing if breathing has stopped the victim should be given artificial ventilation by mouth to mouth rescue situation circulation if the victim is unconscious then after giving mouth to mouth respiration twice the heart should be pressed down hard by pressing the chest with the both the palms these two actions should be repeated alternately about 15 times this is called cardio pulmonary rescue situation short form is cpr it helps to bring circulation back to normal if the rescue or uh, victim is injured and bleeding through the wound then wound should be covered with an antiseptic pad and pressure applied on it for 5 minutes with either thumb or palm fracture and impact on vertebrae if any bone is fracture it is essential that the fractured part be immobilized it can be done with the help of any available wooden rods buttons rulers if there is an impact on the back or vertebral column the patient should be kept immobile on a firm stretcher burns if victim have burns injuries it is beneficial to hold the injured part under clean and cold flowing water for at least 10 minutes for injuries like sprains twisting and contusion the rice remedy should be applied rest ice
compression elevate allow the victim to sit in a relaxed position apply an ice pack to the injured part after the ice pack treatment the injured part should be massaged gently the injured part should be kept in a rest elevated position here you can observe in this picture very first picture cardal method useful for children and underweight victims carrying piggy bag useful for carrying patients who are unconscious human human crutch method if one of the leg is injured the victim should be supported with minimum load on the other leg pulling or lifting method this is used for carrying an unconscious patient through a short distance carrying on four hand chair you can observe your four hand chair this way this is useful for when support is needed for the part below waist carrying on two hand chair you can observe here two hand chair this way useful for those patient who cannot use their hands but can hold their body upright method used by the fire brigade stretcher in an emergency if a conventional stretcher is not available then a temporary stretcher can be made using bamboo's blanket etc few another emergency measures boats are used by civil administration to rescue people trapped in a flooded area as an emergency measures wooden boards bamboo floats air filled rubber tube from a tire can be made used an advantage a fire extinguisher is portable appliances that can be easily carried anywhere various appliances are used to put out a fire so here we have done this chapter on question and answers i will send you for the in this lecture itself only thank you